I realized in the first couple of videos using a lot of terms that if I was showing it to my mom, she would say, what's fiberglass, what's resin, what's expanding foam? So I thought what we'll do here is answer some of those questions before we get on to the next step in some of the uh, products that we're going to be using. But basically what we have here is the building blocks of what was boat construction in the 90s. There are still boats today that are made with the same methods. But So this is the resin and hardener. This is what is kind of like a plastic-like material after it's mixed together and it's brittle until you add the fiberglass cloth or the fiberglass mat. And this here is a 17 ounce and they make um, thicker and stronger but this is going to be perfect especially in the way that we're going to layer it for the bottom of the boat but this is 17 ounce cloth and you can see just how tightly it's woven now here's the other cloth and this actually goes on the top this is one and a half ounce cloth and you can see that it's kind of loose looking in the way that it's um, got a bunch of fibers that are laid and then matted together versus this which is actually woven so this has a lot more strength and rigidity once you mix it with resin and this actually gives you something that you can sand and then top coat and it fills in all these little holes and for that you use this product and that's total flare which is basically like a um, kind of like a bondo if you were doing work on a car it gives you something that you can sand down before doing Ew. gel coat and to fill up the cavity we'll be using this it's a two-part foam and i think i called it epoxy in another video but it's polyurethane um, it is 94 percent closed cell so what that means is that at least 94 percent of what makes foam buoyant the little bubbles will be fully closed from everything i've read uh, the reason it's not 100% is for wherever it makes contact. Um, so those don't always form full circles and that's how you get the 6% difference. But what you see there will give me about 600 pounds of flotation if I was to use both gallons. I don't think I'll be using it. All right, we'll start with the two-part foam. The reason, well, it's fun. So I'm just using a couple of um, takeout containers instead of the measuring ones, but I'm just going to approximate about an ounce-ish of each. And then you mix it together for about 20 seconds and I fully expect that it is going to go well over this uh, container here as it starts to expand. Basically, as you stir it, you can see where, just like you're mixing something in the kitchen, you want a nice even bit of color. You don't want it, it's almost got sort of a caramelly kind of color to it. Uh, but you can see as the darker mixes in with that clear, all of the little streaks go away. So it's looking like we're almost there. I haven't kept track of the 20 seconds, but I'd say that's about... That's about close. All right, so I got it on this plywood because once this starts to kick, it'll be fun. That's so cool. That was so cool, I called Love Bag out to watch. Isn't that cooler than watching paint dry? Yes, it is. <laughs> 
Uh, so I'll let that set up and then we'll take it off the wood and I'll show you what it looks like. And I will tell you that the resin part isn't going to be as exciting, but I love the way that it smells as it comes together. So let me get this moved out of the way and we'll mix up some resin. This is so cool. It continues slowly getting a little bit bigger. I don't want to touch it. It's still tacky, uh, but it will harden to the point we'll be able to grip it here in just a little while. In the meantime, blustery. Uh, I figure what I would do is show you not only how the resin comes together, but I'll put some paper here and we'll tack it down to this little piece of plastic and show you what happens from you know a flimsy cloth or a flimsy mat to it becoming rigid, like what you know is the boat here. So the reason the hardener is so small is that it takes very little of it compared to this. So we're just going to roughly guesstimate about an ounce of the resin. And it's only gonna take just a few drops of the hardener here. And I think that's, it's a little cool out, so I'm just putting a little bit more. The temperature does make a difference. When it's hot out, you can put less hardener and it sets up just the same. So we'll start to stir this together. And I'll tilt this so you can see that the consistency is already starting to change from two runny kind of liquids to almost becoming a loose jam-like, kind of like a warm honey-like consistency and it will also get warm as it starts to activate and like I said the smell it just reminds me of a kid when I would fix surfboards and do little patch jobs on people's boats or little Hobie cats that got dinged and things like that set that down and then we'll just start to impregnate the cloth with the resin we want to make sure that it soaks all the way through basically getting to both sides which is why I wetted the bottom and you'll see as the color comes together it's actually the lack of color it almost becomes a little bit more um, transparent instead of the bright white We'll put the other piece of cloth on top of it, show you how those two go together. Oh, I love that smell. Love it. All right. Normally I'd have gloves on. This stuff gets sticky and tacky. All right, we'll put this other piece on. And this is the way it will go ultimately when we put on the final coat after we build up the base ultimately this is what we'll be doing when we patch the hole using the heavy cloth on the bottom sandwiching the hole and then over top is the lighter layer and that's for easy sanding filling and finishing the bottom work all right, I'm gonna let that set, and I'll uh, let this sit too since the brush is now a goner. And I'll show you what this looks like when it hardens, and this should be getting pretty close. Oh yeah, I can touch it, still just a little bit tacky. But we'll come back to those in just a little bit. Well, these continue to activate. Oh, that's getting nice and crusty. Uh, you might have noticed the syringe looking device, and this is for filling in all the small holes. You can mix the resin suck it up into it and then all of the holes like for instance where the center console will go back I'll use that to fill all of the screw holes and then come back and re-drill them and then that way not only does the screw have something fresh to bite into but it also acts as another layer to keep the screw from having direct contact with the wood and ensuring that water doesn't get in and do its damage. 
This expanding foam is so neat. It's going to be perfect for filling in the cavity. Um, once again, this is the two pound, so it's not the heavyweight, the six pound stuff, but perfect for what we're going to need to add some rigidity inside of the cavity so that we can come back then with the layers of paper and start to rebuild that. The temperature is a little bit cool. I could have added more hardener, but it is starting to set up. Um, the warmth has gone away, so the kick is done, and that should mean it's going to get uh, harder, and I'll show that to you the next time. But this is kind of cool, uh, how much adhesive property it has to just a simple piece of plywood. So with all the little nooks and crannies inside of the cavity, we're gonna get good adhesion, and that's going to allow us to make some forward progress here, fill the cavity, and start to get some layers of paper in and get the boat back in the water. Some may call that abstract sculpture. Pretty neat. All right, so we'll show that to you as everything continues to harden. And I hope you enjoyed the video. So when we're using the terms like resin and hardener and the fiberglass, you'll um, now know what it is and why we'll be using it as we put together all the pieces here to patch the boat. So having some fun, learning something new, it's not nonsense, it's nonsense.